Hi, I'm Pritam Koda, and in this video I am going to show you the post-generate method of PCG. Uh, the PCG system has a hook you can add if you put a PCG component into a custom blueprint. And what it does is, after the generation is done, after um, the graph has run, because it's multi-threaded and parallel and you don't um, really know from a programmer perspective when it's going to be finished, uh, it allows you to do operations on the generated data after it has been generated. Um, for this tutorial, I'm not going to go over sort of the same steps again that we did previously. So I created a custom actor. I added a very simple graph, which is uh, just a landscape surface sampler, uh, and that is put it in. This is put into the custom blueprint actor with a PCG component and that's all I've done. So what I want to do is I want to spawn meshes with the custom, like with the generator, and then I want to pass in custom data to each mesh after it's generated. So I'm going to do that by adding a static mesh spawner. I'm going to put in uh, one entry and that'll be one of the example plants. Uh, let's take this fern and I'm going to add a custom uh, override material which I've already created. So all this does is it takes the color green and it takes one custom data point and hue shifts it. So essentially what I'm going to recreate is just the same thing you would get if you take the per instance random, um, but this is just for demonstration purposes. So obviously you don't need random data in, in instance meshes because already exposed through the per instance random, uh, but we're going to recreate this. So first I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new function on the custom generator blueprint, which I'll call post generate. And it needs to have one parameter of the type PCG data collection. And it doesn't really matter what it's called. So I'm going to call it data. And it's important if you use the PCG generation in editor to flag the function as called an editor, otherwise it won't be um, called. And then in PCG under properties, advanced, there's a list of post generate function names. And I'm going to add my post generate there. You can actually add multiple functions, and as long as the name uh, is the same, uh, the function name is the same as here, you can add different function names. I'm not sure what the use case is, but at least it's there. So then, uh, once this function is called, we know that our graph is done generating. So in this case, um, since I'm using a static mesh spawner, I'm not using it yet, but now I am. It will create instant static meshes on the blueprint actor. So what I'm going to do is I'll get component by class. Actually, let's do components. Uh, it should only generate one, but this future proves it. So and then I'm going to search for instanced static mesh component. I'm going to add a for each loop. So it's going to iterate through all the components. Then I'm going to get the number of instances by calling get instance count. And then I'm going to create a for loop to iterate through all the instances from the instance index zero to sort of the last index is the length minus one. Um, actually, before I'm going to do this, I'm going to actually set uh, the number of custom data floats to one. This reserves the necessary memory for each instance to have a custom data point. And then um, with each index, I'm going to set custom, uh, custom data value. So I'm going to take the index from, from iteration, pass it to the instance index, custom data index zero, because we only have one custom data. And then I'm going to take a random load 
by default, this is just between zero and one, which um, in this case will be sort of zero and one is the percentage. So this is enough. We can just pass in the, that. And we're going to do a compile. And now it's already run in the background. So when I go back, you can see there's all the meshes, but for some reason they do not have. Oh, <laughs> I forgot to actually assign uh, the material in the override. So there we go. Do it again. And there we go. So that's uh, every instance now has a random value. And I can actually show you if I disable this piece of code. They all have the same green value. Yeah, so there you go. Um, this is how you can modify generated mesh data afterwards when the generation is done. Uh, for this small example, it's sort of pretty fast. And it's probably going to take just one frame to generate. But if you, let's say, generate like a whole uh, partitioned world, then uh, this will be very helpful. And yeah, that's all this video is about and I uh, hope this helps. So see you next time. Bye.